Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to present at the Be The Different virtual conference this year. It is an honor. My name is Sasha Rodriguez. I am the Community Marketing Manager at Ray Mobile Safety. Ray connects millions to those trusted to protect them by providing innovative solutions to prepare better, respond faster, and communicate more effectively during an emergency. At RAVE, I am responsible for driving effective community outreach campaigns to increase brand presence, engagement, and awareness in the communities of our customers. I also help and establish and maintain new and existing relationships with clients, advocacy groups, and media outlets. You might recognize me from my time serving at Charleston County 911 Center in South Carolina as the 911 public educator for over five years. During that time, I was responsible for educating the community on how the 911 system works and when and how to contact 911 in the event of an emergency. While working at Charleston County 911, I discovered my passion for public safety. At the beginning of my career at 911, I realized there is work to enhance and improve the 911 system and how important it is to have a 911 education program in your community. Many, many TV shows and movies shows that when you call 911, the call taker know everything, exactly where you are or who you are. And that is not the case. Luckily, the 911 system is improving every day thanks to many leaders and amazing organizations providing innovating technology. Please allow me to introduce you to Todd Miller, Senior Vice President of Strategic Programs at Ray Mobile Safety. Todd, can you share with us your background? Sure. First of all, Sasha, great to be with you. Thank you very much. Well, my background here at Rave Mobile Safety, I've been with the team for about 14 years. Uh, so uh, it's been quite a while and, and I've done everything at Rave from run our services organization to run our sales organization. So a little bit of everything. Awesome. What is Rave Mobile Safety mission? You know, when I, I think about our mission, I, I think it's uh, important to recognize that here at Rave Mobile Safety, we believe that safety is a core human right. Everyone has the right to be safe where they live, work, go to school, and congregate. And we believe that technology is required to make this a reality. And so here at Rave, we're really proud of the fact that we connect millions of individuals to those trusted to protect them by providing innovative solutions to prepare better, respond faster and communicate more effectively during emergencies. That is great. How much has the 911 system changed since you started your career at RAVE? Well, how, how much has the system changed in the last 14 years or so? You know, it's, it's really interesting. So we started doing uh, the RAVE 911 suite, uh, sometimes referred to as Smart 911, probably about a decade ago, uh, give or take. And I can remember uh, when we first started talking to PSAPs about connecting the internet within their PSAP and bringing in additional data. And, uh, you know, we got hung up on a few times, uh, to be quite honest with you. The reality was at the time, although this concept of NG911 was, was still out there on the horizon, it was still a little bit scary for folks to think about additional data sources and additional communication tools being made available outside of the normal call flow. And so, you know, we had to help earn the trust of the PSAP community and help them recognize that we can provide this additional information and these additional communication tools that are 100% in line with some of the activities that they're already doing it. And we can do it in a, in a safe way that doesn't uh, have any impact on their cybersecurity. And so I think that, you know, just the idea of leveraging uh, technology has been a real change uh, in 911 over the past decade or so. That is outstanding. And I agree with that. When I started my career in um, 911, uh, the system, I remember that um, the community was another component, just introducing the community to the solution, Smart 911. A was well received because now they can share additional data with the first responder, something that they couldn't done before. And many citizens didn't know that we don't know where they are, who they are, how many people live in the household, what type of allergies or what type of medical conditions they have. But thanks to leveraging to more smart um, 911 centers realized that this is a big, great tool to get to know the person they're going to respond to and also to prepare first responders as well. So I remember those days when Smart 911 came out and came to our center 
And it was one of those where we were nervous, but at the same time excited to introduce that to our community. Yeah, you know, uh, I think, uh, what's been helpful is that there's been tremendous success stories uh, across the country. You know, I, I think about uh, one that happened not too long ago, uh, a, a gentleman uh, who was in Virginia, had a heart attack and happened to live in an area uh, of Virginia that was pretty rural and wasn't mm -hmm. easy to get to. And so, you know, the good news is he had already created that safety profile. And so even though uh, his wife was frantic uh, when making that 911 call and their house was very hard to find, you know, having that additional information instantly, instantly and automatically delivered to 911 made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And so as we've been able to share those types of stories across the country over the last 10 plus years, I think that's played a role in, in influencing the changing technology landscape of the peace apps and, and there being a real recognition that this technology can make a huge difference. It can provide additional information where without it, you just wouldn't have anything to go on. Absolutely. And it, when it comes to the community side as well, you have a child that is four years old. They know how to call 911. However, they do not know their address. They don't know that mommy is diabetic, but now mom pre creating that profile with time ahead of time and the child calling 911 because she's down and fainted, now they can respond to the person because now the child is not the source of the information, right? So that all connects and that's the beauty about the 911 system is this not only the agencies, but also the community working together to provide additional information for every party. So yeah, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it and how, how has changed since 20, 2014, you said? No, more years. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been with Ray for about 14 years. Oh, that's what it is. 14 years, yes. <laughs> uh, well, great. What type of solutions does Ray Mobile Safety offers for 911? Well, Ray, Ray provides a, a variety of solutions today. I think uh, many in the PSAP community are probably familiar with Smart 911. Now, it's important to recognize that Smart 911 is just one aspect of what we do. And I think the best way to think about Smart 911 is, is being that, that people-related data. That's one part of a broader RAVE 911 suite, which can also bring in facility data. So for example, across the state of Arkansas and Delaware and Louisiana and Oklahoma and now Mexico, New Mexico, we've been able to collect floor plans for every single K through 12 school across those states that are instantly and automatically delivered with 911 calls without mm -hmm. anyone having to take any additional action. And so uh, it's not just that people data, it's facility data too, or it's the ability to have two-way text messaging sessions with any 911 caller, or the ability to solicit real-time video. How about the ability to push notifications out? You know, a big part of what we do is also around mass notification. And what's unique about RAVE is our ability to bring in all of those stakeholders. It's not just about 911 or first responders or emergency management or public health. Our solutions truly address the needs throughout the safety ecosystem, throughout the life cycle of an emergency, and help provide tools and communication capabilities and data that can impact any emergency across all of those stakeholders. Absolutely. Just you naming all those. I remember when I was in the 911 center, I had to use the safety profile. We use chat, we use facility. And like you said, it's that ecosystem that um, at the end of the day helps in many ways. So that's great. How can agency better protect their first responders in their community? You know, I think when you, when you think about first responders and, and how they're engaging within the, the communities, there's a couple things that are worth keeping in mind. It is a changing public safety landscape. We've talked about some of that today in terms of technology and how technology has enabled a faster, more effective response. But it's also about changing attitudes and perceptions and ways that the public wants to be uh, engaged with. So you know, what we see as, as trends is there's a real desire to connect communities and public safety at a, at a different level. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we all have, have seen you know, some of the, the tragedies uh, across the United States, whether it's a, an emergency or civil unrest, and there's tension 
uh, in, in our communities. And, and that really is, is a result of the communities asking for a different types, different type of response. Uh, they want to, uh, you know, when there's a mental health crisis, for example, it may not be appropriate to send an officer that is untrained in uh, mental health issues and how to de-escalate an issue. Whereas in, in, in many jurisdictions, the only resources they have available today are those uh, law enforcement officers to, to send on those uh, on those emergency calls. And so, you know, we think that uh, connecting the communities better with the first responders, allowing communities to share more information, whether it's their facility information or whether it's their uh, safety profile information, but we can provide a faster, more effective response, a more informed response, if we can put more information into the hands of 911 and first responders. And so, you know, it's not just about sending that officer on that call, it's about maybe sending a crisis intervention uh, trained officer, or maybe it's an identification through that safety profile that this is an individual that has a history of mental health issues and, mm -hmm. and will respond a certain way. And so let's get that mental health professional to respond with the officer so that we can de-escalate the, the situation. At the end of the day, what I'm really highlighting here is more information mm -hmm. can help protect both the community and our first responders. A hundred percent. I agree totally. One of the biggest thing that would even help and now the smart number one, our safety profile provides so much detail that is very um, useful for our first responder. But just knowing an emergency contact on your safety profile that they can, the call taker or someone in the PSAP can call just to say, hey, by the way, this person is calling. Can you tell us more about the, the caller? Is so much so, so helpful for the first responder. So I agree more information is the way to go. Well, so let me take that a couple steps further too, Sasha. You know, we talk a lot about the, the, the people profile, but let's talk about how we're also using this very same technology to help protect soft targets. Uh, I mentioned a couple of states a little while ago, uh, Arkansas, Delaware, Louisiana, New Mexico, and others that have deployed this technology on a statewide basis. And they've done so because they recognize that, again, having more information can help protect our communities. And so in, in those cases, it's not just about that safety profile. It's about, you know, what happens when I get a 911 call that comes in from one of my schools? It's being able to provide that floor plan instantly and automatically. Or what about those emergencies that those soft targets don't even know about? You know, we, we had a situation not long ago where there was a, a, a robbery, an armed robbery of a pharmacy right down the street from an elementary school. The school, the school had no idea that that was going on, but law enforcement did. And so they used this platform to be able to notify the soft targets in the area, schools and other places of business mm -hmm. to inform them that they should go into lockdown temporarily while there was a search for an armed suspect in the area. This is something that those soft targets, those schools and those places of business would not have known of otherwise. Yeah. And so it's bridging those communication gaps that's also really key. Absolutely. And one of the my success stories that I want to share was is Brave Alert, one of our, notifi our notification system. We had an emergency operations center send a Brave Alert of a missing child. Thanks to that alert, they found her in 10 minutes because the citizens were informed immediately about that. And this child was autistic. Just yeah. there are many ways. <laughs> uh, and, and, and that's a really great example, Sasha. And I think about it a lot myself. I've got you know, two boys. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit older uh, now, but you know, what if one of them were to go missing? That, that, that use case is a really great one because today, <clears throat> excuse me, in a, a missing person's case, mm -hmm. oftentimes they'll send an officer uh, out to the household, ask for a photo, the photo will be brought back to the police department for it then to be distributed. But all along, we've lost time, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and there's something, you know, that's something that we all know is, is critical in emergencies is, is time. Time is essential. And we're looking to always reduce those time frames. And so uh, rather than losing time, trying to gather those additional details, having them provided instantly and, and automatically can make a huge difference. And, and not only that, let's, let's take this a little bit further and talk about how these systems can be connected. Y you can get a call in from a parent that says that their child's missing. Uh, using the RAVE system, that profile pops up automatically and you get those great things like the photo and physical description. Mm -hmm. And then our RAVE alert mass notification solution can be used to distribute that 
that information right away. Okay. So instantly you can inform millions uh, across your jurisdiction that you have that missing child and even include a photo of that child. Yep. I mean, it, 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 the technology is, is outstanding and the results speak for themselves. Absolutely. One of the 911 calls that I heard with a success story from the Rave Solution was a mother. She barely was able to talk to the call taker. She just said, my child is missing. The call taker immediately told her, your profile is up. We, we're, we're working on it. Yeah, it. The, the, you know? those examples uh, <laughs> make you feel good because you, you know okay. that, uh, you know, here's the reality. In, in the standard 911 call where someone calls and says, hey, I just saw an accident. Okay, thank you. We'll take your information and move on. Yeah, the, 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 these additional details may not be necessary, but it is in those more challenging, difficult calls, calls that tend to be uh, longer in duration, tying up a resource. Mm -hmm. this, this information and these tools can be so valuable. You know, rather than simply relying on a, a, an individual to verbally communicate all those those details, you can solicit all of that right from the Rave Mobile Safety platform. And even more so, if you need to gather additional information, again, those communication tools are available. So, uh, if you need that caller to not only you know tell you uh, what the situation looks like, but if they want to show you, you can just send them a text message and simply by clicking on that text message, they can be streaming video right back to the Peace app so that you can get eyes on the situation right away. Absolutely. And just thinking about my time being a 911 public educator, I remember reaching out to the deaf and hard hearing community and they were so excited that they can fill out a profile where they can say they are deaf. So if they call 911 and hanged up, the call taker will know that might be an emergency and they cannot speak, right? So the chat feature would have been perfect and it was used just to chat two-way communication with that person because they're deaf, they cannot speak. Even more, personally ex experienced my mother, she gets nervous, she barely speaks English. But in the profile I have, I said that her language is Spanish. Thanks to that, that saves so many minutes finding that third-party language trans interpreter. In that, you know, all the end of the day, this many ways. And I think we have a lot of great ways that the community and the first responder can be better protected with, um, with these solutions. Um, now, next question. Can you share how Rave customers are using Rave Mobile Safety Solutions? Yeah, you know, we've already talked about a good number of those uh, examples uh, today, but I I'll share with you a, a couple more. You've got places like the, the city of Chicago. Uh, they had some issues, some challenges uh, with their 911 system uh, in terms of not being able to have enough information about those 911 callers. And so they implemented the RAID 911 suite or, or Smart 911. But what was interesting there is that at the very same time, they took a look at how they were managing their mass notifications. And they recognized that there's a little bit of a challenge here uh, when it comes to engaging with the community, which is so important. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we how do we get the community to act and 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 provide more information? And then on top of that, maybe go register multiple places. It, it can become a real challenge in terms of communication with the public. And so uh, they turn to Rave because we've really solved that issue for those communities. We're that one stop shop. Uh, that one location uh, where community members can go and opt in to share as much or as little as they choose to about themselves and members of their family. And some of that information can be used in the course of a 911 call. Some could be used by emergency management uh, when they need to send out broadcast mass notifications. But really uniquely, we can now even open these uh, de additional details up so that we can involve other key stakeholders. Just think about what we're going through with COVID right now, right? It's a real challenge for, for public safety. And now we've got more stakeholders that are, are becoming engaged. We've got public health officials and they want to know mm -hmm. uh, when, when we send an officer out, was, was that to a household where they've tested positive for COVID or not? And you know, having those types of, of details and, and recognizing that we've got to involve all these key stakeholders is absolutely key. So we're working with a lot of communities that are, are looking to optimize their end-to-end -end uh, community engagement and approach to safety where they can consolidate uh, their approach and, and ensure that there's more information being shared across what are typically siloed organizations that aren't sharing information today. Mm -hmm. And 
this is a perfect example how much that one system has changed all these years because it sounds like the PSAP now is becoming like a hub of information where the information that we have got, the 911 center is gathering is also helpful for other type of organizations and departments in, in their county or in their state. Um, how has RAVE has adopted these solutions over the years to meet industry needs? I know you talk about COVID, but do you have any more examples to add? Yeah, I, I, I do. And, and uh, you know, I think core to what we think about, uh, and I've mentioned this a, a couple of times, is around making sure that we involve all the stakeholders uh, that are engaged in, in an emergency. Again, if you, too often uh, emergency responders uh, and stakeholders involved in, in these emergency responses uh, are, are siloed. Uh, again, emergency management doesn't always coordinate with 911, which doesn't always coordinate with uh, public health. And so uh, as we initially brought solutions like Smart 911 or the RAVE 911 uh, suite to the, the market, you know, one of the, the questions that we started to get was from emergency management. And they said, we see those great things that you're doing with 911, but those, those types of, of details that you're collecting are really critical to us on the emergency management side. What, what can you do to, to help us? And so we evolved the solution uh, to be able to still honor all, all the privacy and security of, of that smart 911 profile, but be able to leverage that information in new and innovative ways and allow um, emergency management uh, to to be engaged and, and use that information, and then the, the COVID example, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, we have a, a whole bunch of questions that can be asked of citizens as they register, and unique to Rave is we also have the ability to customize those questions, and so communities can ask very specific questions that may be unique only to their community. Or uh, they could ask a question like, have you tested positive for COVID? Uh, have, you, uh, uh, have you taken the vaccine? Mm -hmm. uh, th these are, are, are questions that our communities came to us with and said, we've got a problem here. How do we start to track these items? How do we mm -hmm. ensure that we're keeping our first responders uh, safe and have the most up-to-date information? So we evolved these solutions to be able to incorporate some of those additional uh, questions. So, and I think for, for us, it's all about continuing to listen to the community. And by community, I mean both the, 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 the citizen-based residents yeah. and the public safety community and, and making sure that we're continuing to innovate on a daily basis to provide the best public safety solutions available. That is perfect. You you said it perfectly well. Like I said, you know, we're looking to continue to enhance and improve the 911 system. See what is it that our community and our public safety agency needs for us to provide them that information they need to help in, in case of an emergency or like now the COVID situation, other things like that. Thank you so much, Todd, for sharing how Rave Mobile Safety has adopted this solution over the years and to meet the 911 agency across the country. I appreciate it, Sasha. Thank you very much for the time. Educating your community about the 911 system is very important. Many citizens don't know how and when to call 911. What happens when you call 911? Can you text 911 for an emergency? Does 911 know my location? Does 911 speak my language? And many more questions. Here are five easy, effective ways 911 agencies can educate and engage your community. Post 911 tips on your social media platform like Facebook and Twitter. If you don't have social media platform, reach out to your user agencies such as police department, fire department, or EMS. They will be more than happy to share these 911 tips to your community. Provide 911 education materials to your local schools. Teachers will be so happy to receive these materials. This is a perfect age for children to learn about 911 and how and when to call and what to do for an emergency. Reach and attend local community meetings such as civic groups, HOA, religious meeting, association for autism or deaf or hard hearing and many more. At this time, maybe these meetings are not being held in person, but Zoom meetings, go to meetings might be available. So think outside the box and see how you can provide some materials to present to these groups. Partner with your user agency or government departments to educate your community. 
some government departments send bills where you can add tips on the bills. You can add information on their website and also on their newsletters. Share your story with local media. Media is your friend. Do not be afraid. Share with them positive stories. Share with them new services that your agency is offering for your community. If you want to learn more about how Brave Mobile Safety can help you do all you can today, please visit our website at www.bravemobilesafety.com. Have a great day.